Oh, hi, jewelry makers. So we are now on, I always forget, but I think it's uh, day 18 of the advent calendar. So should we have a look and see what's in here? So if we open it up, let's have a look. Oh, it's quite heavy. Look at all of this. So these are, I mean, absolutely some of my favourites. One of my favourite gemstones in one of my favourite shapes to work with. Look at all of these. Absolute beauties. So here you have got your amazing Labradorite cabochons. I mean, it, we could just do nothing for an hour and just stare at them because they are absolutely gorgeous should have a look at them all so you've got a real variety here some amazing shapes and sizes just absolutely wonderful to to look at gosh all the different all the different colors that you're getting in there and i love with labradorite how some of it is you get the golden tones with some of it and then it's those electric amazing blues and so when you're looking at them in, in a, a shapes and sizes like this and thinking about how it is that you're going to set them, you want to be looking at which, which colour or, or which way, you know, what do you want to be dominant? Do you want it to be some of the golds? Do you want it to be some of the greens? So when you're looking at them, it's, it's a really, it's a good idea to, uh, I don't know, be really familiar with them that, you, you know, you know if you turn it that way or if it's sitting that way, the main colour that you're going to be getting. So, you know, we always laugh about um, sort of um, looking at them for a long time, but it's, it's a really good, it's a good way to plan out your jewellery when you're thinking about which way do you want the, do you want the cabochon to sit? How do you want it to hit the light? So, and the other one I have got is uh, that one there. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I thought what we'd do for, um, for this project is we'll have a go at um, working with a few, so it's, it's gonna be wire work and it's gonna be setting that cabochon. Uh, we're going to use a few different um, different materials in there and with a couple of different techniques as well. So uh, I've actually added in um, some gallery wire, there's some um, a couple of different weaves in there uh, and we're going to bring it all together so that we set it in, you know, it's quite a majestic setting I think really that one. Um, I really loved how somebody, and it wasn't me, someone had actually named that piece, uh, I think they called it a wilderness pendant which I, I really liked I thought it was quite apt and appropriate for that um, so that was really nice to see I like that so um, to do to do the project so I am going to pick my um, I'm going to go with an oval um, and because I'm working with gallery wire as well and if you if you wanted to do we'll talk a little bit about netting too uh, I, can, I can sort of choose, I've got quite a deep gallery wire and I'll go through all the tools and materials that I'm gonna have. But I'm gonna choose this one. I don't need to worry about the depth or, or uh, anything like that because this is quite a, a, a deep gallery wire. Um, but so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that one there. So if I move these out of the way and then we'll have a look at some of the tools, oh, tools and materials that we're gonna, we're gonna work with. So my usual um, wire working tools, I'm going to have uh, a couple of pairs of chain nose pliers and my round nose pliers. I'm going to use my flush cutters. I'm probably going to use my bail making pliers. Because I'm working with uh, an oval shape, I might use a ring mandrel to form with. Um, I think that's pretty much it tools wise. I'm going to show you uh, if, you've, if you've still got your fork hanging around, uh, we can have a go at the weave on that so we can have a practice with that. Um, so I'm going to work with the fork as well. So that's pretty much our tools. If we look at materials, so if I just move this over. Okay, so I'm going to work with uh, a couple of different gauges of wire and a different sort of wire. So we're going to work with our um, gallery wire, I'm going to have this one here. I'm not going to solder it, so we're going to look at different ways that we can um, uh, anchor that together. Okay, I've got um, a 0.8, or you could work with a 1mm, 
so more structural wire. Uh, I've got a 0.6 and a 0.4, and you can use a variety of these. Um, so you can see there. I'm also going to uh, work with, um, if you've got some scrap wires, uh, I would say work with um, at least a, a one mil wire if you want to. Um, I've actually got on here, on the piece I'm gonna demo with, you can see I want to see what it looked like with a really chunky um, base wire. So I've actually done my weave. I think that I've actually done the weave uh, in a 0.8, which is quite unusual. I meant to pick up a, a 0.6, but I've done it in a 0.8. So a little bit more, um, you'll need a little bit more force behind it. Um, and it can sort of make your hands ache a little bit if you take breaks, but absolutely you can do it in um, a 0.6 or a 0.4. So that's gonna be our weave. So if we look at, so those are the materials. So a variety of wires, obviously we've picked our cabochon. I've got a, a, a strip of gallery wire and I'm gonna work with um, some spaces as well. And you can see I've got various size sort of graduating spaces there. They're not essential, but they make a nice, um, uh, you can see on the bale, underneath the bale, sometimes it's really lovely to have those in as well. So it's good to, if you've got them to hand. Um, so if we have a look at the project there, you can see it's made up of, we, so we've got our, we've got the setting, the gallery wire setting for the cabochon. You can see that's sort of that inner frill that is holding and supporting the stone. This is a decorative strip of wire that's pre-made, uh, lovely and uniform, and we just need to manipulate it around the stone um, and make it and, and fold it in so that it's nice and secure and it sets that stone. Then outside of that, we've got that almost like a, like a filigree type finer, finer wire, uh, that frill going around the outside. And we're going to create that uh, and that's where we're going to use our base wires. Uh, and we can either do that in a, the one there is in a 0.4, you could do it in a, a 0.6. And like I said, I actually did it mistakenly, but we'll see how it looks uh, in a, in a 0.8. Then we've got the bale that's going up there and that is uh, so your uh, you know more of your standard wire work so your figure of eight uh, weave on on a couple of wires and so we're going to make a bale there too so those are the techniques that, that we're going to be doing in the project so if we have a look at our starting point so if I just move some of these out of the way so we can have a look about how we're going to shape and form that gallery wire around the stone. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my cabochon and I've got my gallery wire. Okay, so I'm just going to start, I'm going to look at which way I think that the light is hitting that, that cabochon in the best way. So if this was the top of the pendant where the bale is going to be, so I'm gonna have a look there. Obviously different light sources, but I'm gonna see what it looks like this way and this way. I mean, this one is a, it's such a beautiful stone. I'm getting a, a wonderful effects either way. Okay, I think I'm gonna go something like that. I'm gonna set it in portrait as well. So with this one, I'm gonna now start and I'm gonna just take I'm gonna leave myself probably about a centimetre or so. I'm gonna put an angle in here. So I've got my chain nose pliers at first. I'm just gonna come out. Then if we look at where this is gonna go, so I'm gonna start at the top and work my way around. Now I have annealed this already, so it's, it's pretty soft, but just to help me, I'm just gonna to start to get a bit of a curve in there. And start to bring this round. Okay, and you can see it just, I'm following the shape of the stone all the way. I'm gonna move the stone around on the board. That's why the macrame boards or beading boards are really good to work with. It's a nice soft surface, but it's gonna actually grip it a little bit so we can see how this is going to going to work there. So I'm going to do try and get that so it is quite central. And I'm going to hold and pinch there and bring that in. Okay. 
So again, so I'm just going to hold here. I might sharpen up the angle there and just go in on that side as well. And again, just pop, keep, every time I sort of make a change with the wire work, I need to put the, the stone back in to make sure that it's still going to fit. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go back and just again, just sharpening it up. So I'm just bringing it in so it's getting tighter and tighter. And what you're, what you're looking for is you want less gap. So if you're looking through here, you don't, you don't want to see um, any sort of light coming in and no gaps in between the, the gallery wire and the stone itself. Okay, so what I can do then is I can go in and just snip off here as well. We can use that for something else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of 0.4 and we'll start to bind a bit of that. Okay, so I'm just going to check again that I've got a nice fit. I'm going to start to go in. So this, this gallery wire, what I can also do here, um, if you look at the design, I can go in and I can just turn in a couple of these. If you have a look, what you're looking for is you've got those little... Um, little points here and we can turn those in so that they I could snip off the one side and just turn in on the other so if I just see where it lines up so I can snip off a couple of these I just might actually just push that in a little bit okay so you're just looking with gallery wire if you're not going to solder it you're just looking for different areas where you can snip off and fold back. So I'm going to snip off here and fold in on that side. And remember, all of this is going to be hidden underneath the bale that we do. I'm going to do the same here. So I might just take a little bit of off here and here. And snip there. And there's actually, it's not sort of any set measurements I can give you there because obviously the, the beauty of getting an assorted, you know, an assortment of cabochons is they're all going to be different sizes and shapes. So you're just looking to get, I might just take that one off there. So if I separate those two, and I might just bring that one in. So I'm going to snip off the one side and fold over. So you just sort of, I guess, use your common sense when you're looking at it and when you've gone around whatever shape it is that you're working with it and, and sort of see what, what's best to snip off and what's best to leave. But so now we've got a little bit of tension there and that's holding the stone in. So what I can start to do then is, while the stone's out, I can just look at where I want to have. I'm going to have some of them coming in. So if I just take some of these, I'm going to just drop here. I'm going to start and just turn in. So we're essentially creating a ledge for that stone to sit on. And don't worry if it's come out of shape as we're forming it, you know, we know we'd created an oval and we know that it, the stone had, was sitting in, so we can always go back and reshape it onto the stone itself. So as I'm starting to go in, you can start to see I'm going around and that is then creating, as you're just catching the light there, it's going to create a lip for it to sit on. So different gallery wires, the different designs, you know, um, you'll have a look at it and sometimes it might be, you know, an inverted heart um, design. You might get ones with like, it's got a stick design. So you're basically just looking at to create a ledge at the back and to have something that's going to secure at the front. So let's bring this in. Okay, so I've done it roughly and you can see how that now is not going to come out there. 
So I'm going to just fold some of these in. Okay. Just make sure that it's still sitting centrally. So we know now that by doing that, that is now secure at the back. So while I can access it, I can already see, I just need to go and just tighten that little bit at the front so it's a bit more central, it's sort of come out a little bit. I think when I was pushing in the, the bits at the back, sort of come out slightly. So just make sure that at this point, it is central. Okay. Other ways that you could, if you didn't want to work with your gallery wire, if we have a look at some of these examples, you can see another way, if you, if you don't want to work with gallery wire, um, you can net a cabochon. So if you look on um, uh, Jewelry Maker, the YouTube channel, uh, the website, and, and have a look about netting cabochons, you can see you could absolutely do that where, so you're getting that effect uh, going across here. So if you don't have any gallery wire and that's how you want to work with it, you can see um, there are lots and lots of demonstrations there. So that essentially is how you would net there. You can see it's sort of like that frill that you go around and then depending on how the depth of the cabochon that you're working with is how many rows <clears throat> you would do. So if we look at the different stages of that, so that's how it sort of, it would start off. And then depending on the depth of it, so you can see here, this is starting off as one row with this one. So you can see I've got one row, two row, and then I've just come over with sort of like half. So I've skipped a few of them, but that I've got, it's securing the, the cabochon there. So that technique, if you wanted to look at that, is netting the cabochon. And, and all cabochons will be different. So, so, you know, when we're looking at the, the size and the shape and the depth. So you can see this one, this one here is a large cabochon, but we've actually, we can see here, uh, we've got a row of three. So I've got one, two, three rows on there. Uh, and that's, that's sort of secured there. With this one, it's slightly different because your framework here needs to come on the inside of, um, of your cabochon rather than if you're working with a gallery wire like that, you can just go on the outside because we've created that almost like a seat for it to, to go in. Okay, so that's if you wanted to do slightly different techniques and there's lot, been lots of demos on, on those. So we've now got, we've got our stone our cabochon there that is, is going to be secured here. We've sort of brought this down a little bit so it's not as um, standing off proud uh, height wise. So we know that that can get covered by the, the bale, the wire work bale that we're going to do. And it's also it's a nice decorative wire. So I'm just going to bring that in a little bit as well. And depending, you know, if you're going to work with that, you know, it's, large, there was a particularly large, this beautiful um, cabochon here, what you might decide is you might want an elongated um, bale. You know, if you're, if you're looking at something like that, you might think the sizing wise, that, that you know, it, the balance, it, it needs a large bale. So, you know, see, see what it's like. It, each cabochon will be individual. Okay, so we've got to this point. So now what we're looking at is we've, we've, we've done the gallery wire part. So we know that our stone is going to be secure, especially when we push obviously the front down, but it's, it's sitting in that seat nicely. So what we want to go on to do is we're going to start and, and create, think about the, the, the decorative part to it. So we want to have something that is going to sit on the edge of this. And the lovely thing with the gallery wire is there are lots of areas that we can go in and almost use our, our point for uh, wire as a needle and thread and stitch into it. So I'm going to take some of my, you can either work with um, uh, a one mil or uh, a 0.8. So this one is a, is a 0.8. Bring that in. I'm going to take, uh, so with this one, I've probably got, um, probably got a good 40 centimeters or so, and we'll see how this is going to work. So what I want to do, I want to have enough to go around the cabochon and then into, to, so I can do the bale as well. So again, I'm going to find about the midpoint here and I want to create a curve because we're working with that oval. So that just means that I get that quite a neat shape at the beginning. Then I can go in, follow the shape of the cabochon and start to squeeze here. 
I'm just using my, you might have to, you might, may have to, if it, if it was a heavier gauge wire or a harder wire, you might need to use your, your pliers there. Or if you've got any dexterity problems, you just give it a pinch there because you're looking to create something that sort of is going to sit like that around the edge. So now what we want to do is we, we know we've got the, we've got the setting, we've got, we've started to work with our base wires. So what we're going to do now is going to add um, the decorative element to this. Okay. So if I pop the two there, we'll come back to those. So this is where our lovely weave comes into, into its own. So this is what we're hopefully going to end up with. So something like this. And we're going to manipulate this so it, it looks slightly different as well. So our starting point with this one is going to be, if we look at it, what we've got is we've got a finer wire. And then we've also got, actually, if we look at this end, because I had to cut one of them, we've got one, two, three, four base wires. And it's those that are going to give us that, that really nice frill around the outside. And if you look at that frill, what you're looking for there is you want it so that it's all pretty even. So it's a bit like, I guess, if you were drawing uh, and you were drawing everything freehand, even if you're really super neat, super talented, uh, there's going to be some variation in the shapes or the sizes that you draw. Whereas if you're drawing around something or as a stencil, you know it's going to be the same time and time again because you're going around something. And it's the same with this technique with wire work because I'm going to be wrapping around my wire, around a, a, a set shape. Everything is going to be... Uh, exactly the same. So if we look at these as, as units, this unit should be exactly the same as the unit at the end. And that when you when you take everything off, that's going to mean that your wire work is going to look super neat, which is which is what you want. So if I then bring in my fork. So remember the fork comes into it because it's going to be. Remember we're thinking about thinking about one two three four, one two three four. Okay. So I'm going to use some aluminium wire here. I'm going to show you the pattern. So we're going to go up and around. And we'll look at this as well. And what you might find useful with this, I think it was maybe uh, the one of the first uh, Advent demos. Uh, there was some of this as well. So it might be um, useful if you haven't watched that one. You could, you, you know, that, that might help with this one as well. So I'm going to go one, two three and back to the start and then going to go up and over and I'm going to go again up and over and back to the start and for this one because what we want to do if you look at the actual piece itself if you can see around that frill around that cabochon what we've got is we've got a little loop at the end of that that frill so it goes up to a point and then the end of the point is a, is a little loop so to create that, what we're going to do is rather than just go up and over and down, we're going to hold here and we're going to go around and all the way around that top, back through and down to the end. So you can see so here that loop is formed by going around that top section. So I will do it again, but we're going to finish this, this pyramid off. So I'm going to come up. We're on our way down now. So I'm going to bring it down, up and over, around two, and one, and two. So I've got in between here, I've got four single wraps that are just separating these out. So I've done two, three, four. And we've got something that looks like that. So now when we take that off, you can already see it's looking like it's really neat because we've gone around that mandrel. And then what we can do is we can, and we'll do this separately as well on the other wire, but you can see if we turn that out, so I just gripped it with my chain nose pliers and turned out and that's what gives us the loop. So it's that slight difference of going over the, the fork or the wires. So if I bring in the wires here and get my other wire, and we'll look at it on wires rather than the fork. 
The fork is a really good way of just, it's on a larger scale and it's, and it's not getting too het up on um, tension or anything like that. You're just thinking about getting the pattern into your head. Once you start on the actual wires, then you can think about how, what your tension is like uh, and how you're holding the, the wires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, so this is on aluminium wire, so we're just gonna look at how, um, how, it, how the, the pattern here. So I'm gonna start, so I'm gonna go once, twice, and that's the start. And I pick up my next wire. Remember, I, when I was on the fork, I didn't have to pick any of them up because they were, they were obviously, the, you know, the, the fork has just got the, the prongs on it anyway. So I'm gonna come up and over. So when, when you're working with the wires, you have to control it a little bit more that the wires don't cross over or that you're not pulling too tightly and getting and having no space in between here. So I'm gonna take the next wire, bring that in, come up and over, back to the start. Remember this is our last one, so it's slightly different with this one. Bring this in, up and over. So we go at the back, but then we come all the way around the front, wrap through and back to the start. And then we're coming down now because we've hit the top wire. So I'm coming down, up and over. And be careful on this one that you don't pull too tightly and block off this space here and down. And again, you can see I'm working pretty closely to the area that I'm, I'm trying to wrap in. I'm not working all the way down here. I'm working very, very closely. And so I'm gonna have four wraps there. I've got something that looks like that. So again, I just snip that off. And you can see how when I turn that, that's gonna give us that effect. So what we want to do is if we have a look at the actual pieces now of how this is going to work. So when you're, um, when you're thinking about doing the um, working for the, the, the wire now, so you've, you've, you've done your practice on whether it's the fork or uh, uh, you know, other, other base wires and you've got the pattern in your head. This, and you might, so you might have done little single sections like that, which are relatively easy to do. When you're, when you're working with a long section like this, what's going to probably happen is it will get, uh, it can either, you'll get a bigger gap sort of going and it'll be higher here between sort of like the, if we had one, two, three, this gap here. Or what can happen is as you're doing it, the tension, because you're pulling too, too tight, the tension on the, your weaving wire, you will, it will end up sort of tapering off like this. So what, what can help is if at the beginning, you sort of either, you can use something to, to grip in or um, you can use like a gem setting tool, like a, the, the wooden clamp. Or if you start when you're, to get a bit of space uh, between your wires, if you do sort of like just a scrap bit of um, weave that is just going to help with the spacing. So on this one, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a couple of wraps in between, but what I want to have is I wanna have at least one wire going in between the base wires. So I've just wrapped around here and then I'm gonna come up through and wrap again. And do a couple of wraps like this. So that now has given me a gap between here. I'm gonna come up and over. And then I'm gonna wrap here of wraps and then I'm going to do wrap in this section here and I can straighten that out but what that has done if you see that that sort of tells me the gaps that I want in between I'm going to try and keep these now remember the wire, the wires I'm showing on here are, are aluminium so they're super soft if you're working with a copper copper core or great if you can get them um, um, uh, uh, you can get really good um, fine wires that are made of stainless steel. And you can get those in lots of different places and they're great because they're very fine, but they're hard and they're, they're, not, gonna, they're not gonna do that. So, which is you know, ideal for, your, um, for working when you're doing your weaving. But you can see here, so what I've done here 
and you can see that it ends there so we know this is going to be scrap and my wire is still coming from underneath which is the, the where we want it to is coming from sort of underneath those base wires so you would start again so we're going to go one two so you want to do a couple at the ends here and remember we're coming up and over over two and back to the start up and over three and back to the start up and over three in between three and four wrap all the way around four down at the back back to the start and we've hit our top wire so now we're working our way down so up and over three back to the start up and over two back to the start and then around one four times so one two three four and so we've got a section like that so we know that this is all scrap we just did this this bit here to separate the wires out and then we can keep doing that so what you're going to do is you're going to end up with something that looks like this So you can see, so on this one, so like I said at the, at the beginning, I'd actually, I made a mistake in that the wire I'd picked up and I, as I was doing it, I did think, gosh, uh, my hands are getting really tired with this. Uh, I thought it was a, a 0.6 and I think it's actually a 0.8. So it's a lovely soft uh, bare copper wire, but just maybe if you're starting out with wire work, maybe go with a, a 0.4 or a 0.6. On the actual piece itself, you can see it's a really, really fine detail and that is a 0.4. So you play around with it because you are going to work hard in it as you're doing this technique. Uh, so a 0.4, um, you know, will hold its shape better than if it was just a sort of a, a, an unshaped piece of wire. So what I've got here, and we can see how much I've got there. So if we look at how much this is going to be, and it will, it will move as well, and it will, um, we can stretch it out a little bit. So I've got a section there, and that's going to be more than enough to go around my cabochon. I might even need to get cut some of it off, but let's see how it goes. So I've already had, a, uh, uh, after the show, I had to look at this. So I prepped this last night and I was aware because of the, um, that it, uh, you know, it's a, it was a harder wire to work with and I was pulling quite firmly on it to get so that it was close together. So what that does is that's going to give me, it's going to be a, give me a nice compact weave, but my tension was, um, it was quite firm. So that's going to mean now when I try and take it off these wires, I might have some problems with it. So you can already see there's one wire missing here. So it can be really disheartening that if you spent all this time doing this weave and then you just can't get it off these base wires because we don't want these, the gold wires on there. We don't want those, they're going to be scrap. Scrap as in we can uh, hopefully use some of them again. But sometimes what can happen is when we try to remove them, it'll be just the, the tension will be too tight and so we'll have to go in and we'll cut them. So I'll show you how to do that. So you can already see I've, I've had a, a little go here and I ha definitely had to cut that one there. So I've done all the weaving that, um, and I, uh, I've got all of that and I didn't have to cut it off the reel because we've got open ends. So I've got enough here. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to try and remove this first one. So let's give that a pull here. So let's hope that this demonstration is not like 20 minutes of me trying to remove these, these wires. So let's bring this out so we can see here. So I've got, I've turned it and I'm just trying to support it and remove there. Let me just move that out of the way. Now, while it's got the support on there, what I'm actually going to do as well, so that all the other wires don't twist, I'm just gonna go in with my chain nose pliers, I'm gonna just give these a bit of a turn. Because if I, if I did it while they're, um, if we have a look at, um, if I do this one, yeah? So this one I did actually turn, but if I just turn the whole thing, can you see how everything can move and I'll get a gap there? Okay, so just if you sort of um, just use those base wires to help you. Now, this again, like with all uh, creative processes, 
there can be pluses and minuses. So we know that we've got that support by turning those loops out, but what we're actually doing then is tightening it even more. So I'm gonna do a little bit and then we'll see if we can pull out that next wire. Okay, so let's bring this one in. So we're onto the next wire now. So if I, what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go in. So I, I think I probably just about could, but what I'm gonna do, and unfortunately this means that I probably can't use it again unless I'm gonna do half the amount, but I'm gonna go in very carefully and cut that base wire. So now hopefully they're gonna pull out and be, it's a lot easier. So again, I'm just gonna put a little handle in there and give that a wiggle. Let's see how we're doing on this one. I'm gonna do the same on that one. Now I need to be really careful now. I don't wanna snip that base wire and then go in and cut that, that layer there because if I cut that layer there, what will happen is it will just come go in half. So hold your breath. There we go. I'm just going to start and pull that out there and you can see how now that I don't have the base wires in it's a lot more malleable so just as you are taking those wires out just have a good you know support that that wire work it will have because you've, you've formed it around uh, other wires so it will have work hardened it a bit okay so I'm going to snip that off there and let's see how we're looking so if we bring this back in. So this is gonna then sit something like that. So if I have a look where we're sitting now, it's looking nice. So I'm gonna come round. I can obviously I've got a slightly dodgier end there, so I'm gonna keep that nice and neat. So I think it's this end that I'm gonna be sort of getting rid of. So what I'm going to start to do, I'm going to feed this now through. We might, we might lose some of this angle that we put in, but it's, but it's okay. We can reshape it because we know that it fits. So I'm just sliding this through, taking my time so that you don't want it sort of poking out uh, in an area that it, that it shouldn't be. You just want it to go through that. So is that first. So you can see here, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can see how it's come out before it should have so just sort of like retract it and let's pull that back and bring that round and that's very satisfying when you start to then just put that on and again I'm just going to bring that in so let's have a look where we were there so this has got a lot more shape to it now so I'm going to, I'm going to just snip one of those off. And again, I'm snipping, I'm going to snip while it's on here, making sure that I don't snip that. So I'm going to go in, I'll just snip a little bit more. I don't want to snip this wire though now. So I'm snipping individual coils. Okay. So that now is going to sit something like that. Okay. So what I'm going to start to do, I'm going to take some of my 0.4 and I'm just going to go in. So I'm going to find a midpoint there. I'm just going to anchor. So I'm going to move that out of the way for a minute. I'm going to bring this in and just go in at some point here. So there's a little curve there. So this is going to be, do you remember we were looking at um, the different processes that we we're going to use? This is where we're going to use it. Our wire is like that needle and thread. And I'm going to go from two points. So I'm just bringing that through. So I've got two ends to work with. and because I, ha I haven't secured that cabochon in yet so I should have good access to it 
I'm going to start to find that midpoint. So depending on, on the, the size of it and how many you've done, you might have it so that you've got uh, one point coming here, or if we have a look, so I'm going to count now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I know that, that my starting point of, of securing needs to be here so that it's, so it's even. So I'm just going to take this and hold and go in and a couple of wraps in there. So that, that wire ideally is going to get lost into the wrap there. Okay. So what I can start to do then is I can then, like I say, I'm using it as needle and thread and I'm going into the weave, this sort of filigree weave and into the gallery wire. So if you would, if you'd done your netting, it would be, it would be going into uh, probably the frame of the netting rather than the actual netting itself, because you don't want to um, disturb the, you know, how secure your cabochon is. So I'm just going, bringing that in. It's getting tucked away nicely because we've got lots of different matrices of wire there to, for it to get lost in. Going all the way around, making sure it doesn't kink, and let's stitch it in. You don't want to go too, leave too much of a gap because you want it to be nice and secure. So that's one of the benefits that, although we know that that cabochon sits in there, if it was struggling to find the, the room or I need to take the cabochon out, I can still at this point. So again, just taking my time and I don't want to see too much, I don't want to leave too big a gap in between each stitch because you've got, it's more likely that you'll see it there. And I'm coming around and you can see I'm trying to keep, keep it so that it doesn't kink and that I've got a good tension there. Now at this point, I can then just pull that in and come in and let's secure that there. So hopefully now that should be one side that's done. I'm gonna turn over and let's come in and hold that there. And again, this side then. So we're doing exactly the same, looking for that little gap so if I take the cabochon out for a moment, you'll be able to see where that is going. So I'm going underneath and through and underneath and through. And underneath and through there. underneath and through there. Now I'm going to put the cabochon back in because I don't want it to pull out of shape too much and that cabochon is obviously it's rigid and it's giving it, it's helping to hold it. So let's see, let's see if it went in that way. Okay. Okay, so come to this point. This is finding where it's sitting and stitching that in. And you can take longer than I am here. You just you don't want to rush that part. You just want to make sure that those stitches that you're doing are nice and neat and getting lost into whatever framework of wire that you've got. Okay, I'm gonna put another one in here and then we can sit and look and put it the right way that it's gonna sit and see how this is looking now. Okay, so I'm going to then bring that one in a little bit. I could do with that one coming down just slightly. So I'm going to force that one there and I'm going to go in at that point so that it doesn't move up anymore. Okay, so if I were being critical here, what I would say is I probably could have pulled a little bit tighter there. Um, so if you just take your time when you're when you're doing it, 
Okay, so then I'm gonna go in, and this time, this is up to you with this gallery wire now, you can look at, so just bring that in, tighten that up while I can access it. I could then go in, and it depends how I want to have, um, have it set, so I could go in and sort of bend down different parts of the gallery wire. That will depend on whichever um, uh, design you're working with. So if I just go and do a few, and we can see how then, and then that stone hopefully won't fall out. But that will be just whichever gallery wire you're working with. You can see, so I'm just doing alternates at the moment, just so that it holds it in. And come round, so we've got something like that. Okay. So now what I want to do, we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on the bale. So we've worked all of these, these bits around. When we finally finish, we can go in, you'll notice that it's sort of, it's moving around a bit. That's absolutely fine, because our final thing is we're going to just, we can go and position these with our pliers. So don't worry too much about that if it's moving. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come in and do that bale. So I'm going to bring these forward. And what that will do is it's going to give us that a hanging point, but then it's also going to cover up this section here. Because although we've tried to get it as neat as possible, it's pretty ugly compared to you know, the rest of the, the piece that we're doing. So I'm going to bring this forward. So you can see, so I'm just creating an angle here, and I'm going to bring that and a sharper angle there. So if I just get my pliers in there, hopefully you'll be able to see it's that angle. So I'm forcing those, that, that wire around, so it's going to come at the front and it will cover all of this. So again, so I'm going to bring that there and up and over here. Okay, and then I might actually use a couple of these wires to just come in and wherever I can, I'm just going to then secure that a little bit. So I'm going to work and just bring that there. So you're just doing really whatever you can, wherever you think it looks neatest, to get those wires secure. So that when we start to do that figure of eight weave, so then I'm gonna come in again like a needle and thread, see where it's popping out, and let's secure that there. And let's bring that in. Okay, I'm going to also leave those on, leave the, those tails on for the moment because they might come in handy if I want to add spaces or if I want to add any detail coming around here. Okay, so I need to work a little bit on that spacing, but there we go. So I've got now these, uh, these wires coming up. So I'm going to do uh, some of my figure of eight. So the figure of eight weave, it's... Um, it's a great weave for doing bales uh, and, it, and it builds up quite quickly and it, it's, we can make it very, very, uh, we can do it open or we can have it so that it's, it's compact. Um, but what it will do is it will give almost like a, a full surface area. So that, that bit of the, the dodgy bit of the gallery wire that we want to hide, it should hopefully get hidden uh, behind that weave. So if we look at, I'm gonna, I'll do it on the large scale at first. I'll just pop that there and come back to the 0.4. So I'm going to have two wires. So if we, this, the wires here are my bale, and this is my weaving wire. I'm going to come around, up and over, and around this side and back around the other side, up and over, in between, and come through. So you can see how it's quickly it's starting to build up. The figure of eight comes in as if you looked at the cross section like that. So if we start with that figure of eight, so I'm going to look a little bit now at how much of the, the bale I'm going to do. So I'm going to start to, I'm going to aim for about here, but we are going to be might go a little bit higher. So I'm going to take, hold on to a little bit here. So I've got a bit of tension. Keep my other wires that I don't want to work with anymore slightly out of the way. I need to bring forward so it's, it's avoiding that 
piece of the gallery wire, which I could turn in, but I don't want to disturb the stone too much. And I'm going to come and work my way here. So again, I'm going to move that tail so that I hang on to it for a minute. Up at the front, and you can see that figure of eight. And it's always at the beginning, it's a fiddlier at the beginning because you've got a very, very fine wires that are sort of holding together the shape. And bring that in. And you can see how this is starting to work. Okay. So all you need to think about at that beginning point is you just want to make sure that it's covering that little piece of the gallery wire that we've had to cut off. So I'm just bringing that round and you can see it's starting to build up really nicely. If you want to have it so it's sort of um, a slightly more open you could alternate the wraps in between. So I'd just coil and do more coils on the structural wire and then go across. So you're essentially doing almost like um, like a diamond shape. Uh, so I'm going to keep going up to this point. And there we are. So you can see how this is starting to build. So I'm just going to keep going, do a few more. We're now at the point, so it might start to get a little bit harder now because we're actually going to taper down. So you've got a couple of options here. You could uh, put another um, angle in and start weaving from this point if you wanted to. Or you just take your time with it. And every time that you go ahead and you go and do uh, a wrap like this, you then just push it down so it's sitting next to the other one. And again, so I'm going to come down like that. So let's sit and have a look, see how it has sitting and looking. Right, okay. So I'm going to keep looking like that. Now, if you look at this one, what you can see here, so you can see the contrast of the wire. So I've got almost done that, that diamond shape here. So if we look at how this one would look, sort of it's going to come out and be something like that. So my figure of eight, and it's actually, if I looked at this, I'm, I'm doing this for speed now, but that bale is pretty small there. So I'm gonna go and bring that round. So I'm just gonna do a few more we can get to that this point here. So if you're looking at a wire work project like that, when you've got your, when you've done your bale, and you're thinking the balance it, it doesn't it doesn't sit right. I needed to have had either a bigger bale, a wider bale, maybe a taller bale, and you still got these wires here. All isn't lost because what you can then go and do is you can then take it. So you're almost creating like a false effect around it. So we've got something like this now. So if I just use my bale making pliers and I bring that to the front. If I looked at that. It's, it's a, to me, it's a bit squat. I need it to be, I want it to either be a little bit taller, so I'd have to bring that out, but I also think it needs to be wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, so I'm just gonna cut this off at a good length so that I need for me to carry on weaving. Then I'm gonna bring forward <clears throat> the wires from, the, from the, what's left of the bale. So I'm gonna cross them over at the back covered up the bit of the gallery wire. I'm going to bring them forward. Just move that out of the way. I can then bring those around and shape them. So it's almost like just frames and gives an outline. So again, just take your time with that so you get the same, same gap here. And bring that round. Then I'm going to cross again. 
across at the back. So then I can extend that out. So I now can see it's looking and sitting and it's wider. I can then bring these over to create that detail of a plain wire or I could weave again in between. And often you might use none of these or a combination of these. It, it, it will depend on shape, size of your cabochon. So let's get rid of some of these wires at the back. So now I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to tuck that round into behind the woven section of that figure of eight. And again, I can snip that off a little bit. And again, tuck that in. And you can take longer to tuck in and get a neater look. But that now means, if I just get rid of that tail as well. So now we can come in and have a look at how this is sitting. So again, so I'm going to leave that. This is the, so this wire now is, my, is what was left over of my figure of eight. So I can just go in and again, like, like the needle and thread, just go in and stitch a few of those structural wires together to give it some, so it's nice and secure. Don't want to pull too tightly because I don't want to bring that width in too much. I can bring that and let's leave that there. So your options there, when I'm, if, if I know that I'm happy, I don't want to add anything else to that. If, if I were at home, what I would probably think about doing is I would bring in and I might add some spacers to this one here to really balance out that bale. And I could use this to stitch in and just add in some um, copper spacers there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to snip that off And I have a look at it now. I'm going to use these two. Let's see where they're going. I'm going to take that one so it's coming over to the other side. And if you've got a little bit that maybe needs, either you're looking and you're thinking about the balance or you've got a slightly, uh, it's a, bit, a little bit untidy there, we can start and put a few spaces in here. So let's have a look how we're going to work. So I'm going to use this larger one here. So I'm going in either side. And that then covers up. We know that it's a bit messy under there, but you would never know now. I'm going to come up through. And let's tighten that, secure that there. I'm going to keep that on that side. And again, this one through. Let's bring that in. And stop and have a look. Do you want to add any more? We could go the next size, couldn't we? So we could use one from one side, one from the other. And just you'll get, an, if you can try and do it with two wires, it just looks neater. It's, um, you just tend to get it so it's more central. And again, yeah, I think that looks better now. So I'm just gonna start and just take these. So it's always looking which wires and what tails you've got. So that's why, although it's, when you're doing wire work, it's really tempting to just cut all tails off immediately, but chances are you will, at some point, you might wanna do a few changes and then you're just gonna have to add wires in. So for as long as you can bear them as you're doing your wire work, just leave them on until the very last minute and then go in and cut off. So that last little bit, when you're happy with all of that bale, that can be whether you go in and we turn all these out or you just leave them like that. But you can see there, so how quickly that uh, wire work cabochon pendant builds up. So Merry Christmas. <laughs>